Hey guys and girls, I'm James and welcome to my channel. Today we're taking a look at the DERC D50. Really nice budget drone from DERC. Uh, it's very sturdy, comes with a great remote. And if you're looking at it, it's very similar to the drone that I reviewed last week, which is the DERC D10. You may think, why does DERC make two drones that are almost the same price? Because here's the price of the DERC D10 that I reviewed last week, and here's the price of the DERC D50. Well, there is a lot, they're very similar, but there is a few differences. Uh, the DERC D10 is foldable and just kind of reminds me of the Mavic series because the remote kind of looks like the Mavic series from DJI. Uh, the phone goes underneath, but it still kind of has a clunkiness to it like a budget drone. Don't get me wrong, it flies really well, it's got good battery, uh, handles the wind okay, you can't fly it in heavy winds, but uh, it still has a latency to it. And what I mean by latency is when you turn the joysticks on the remote, it may take a half a second or so for the drone to turn. But there's this is the remote for the DERC D50, and this thing changes everything for these two. I can't believe how good this drone feels when you have this remote. It's very heavy, there's no latency, but the main thing about this drone that I really, really like is the smoothness of the joysticks. I mean, they're extremely fluid. It does not feel like a budget drone. It doesn't have any clunkiness to it. It's just, they feel really smooth, and you think that you're flying a much more expensive drone. It has a nice digital display, your, um, your phone goes on top. It doesn't have an optical flow sensor like the D10, but it does seem to hold altitude very well when you're flying it. DERC uh, is DERC. also related to the Holy Stone, which makes the HS210, which is the best beginner drone in the world, which I really like to learn on a beginner drone because you learn the orientation of the drone before you go outside and you fly a bigger drone. Um, they also make the HS340, which is a great indoor drone. These drones really aren't made for indoors. They're kind of big. Uh, but when you do fly them outside, they're very light, so you got to be careful flying them in heavy winds. So typically what I do is I review the drone a little bit, then I sit down and show you how to fly it and all the options of it, and then I go fly it. But I'm going to switch things up today because I can't wait to show you how good this thing flies. Uh, if you're like me, you don't want to read the manual, and you want to jump on YouTube and learn how to fly it, and we'll go over all the aspects of that later. But let's go put this little bird in the air. So with this landing gear, I mean, we don't even need a, a launch pad. All right, so guys, this is not a GPS drone. So there's a little bit of wind out here. Look how good this thing flies. I'm so impressed. It's got so it's got the green lights on the front. It's got the white lights and it's got the green lights in the back. The white lights in the front. Guys, this thing's seventy dollars. All right, I'm in speed one, believe it or not. So this is the slowest speed. All right, so let's try it on the app. Speed two, speed three. Let's see if that changes it. See, it's kind of like the A10. I don't think it really changes it. I think you have to do it with the remote, even though it's doing really, really good. So on the back side of this one is the speed one. So two, three beats. All right, so this is the best $70 flyer I've ever dealt with in my life. You know, I think I even like it better than the HS175. Uh, I mean, and what I mean by that is I really, really, really like the responsiveness to the controls. So, as I'm pushing forward, it just kind of does what I want it to. So it just seems to be really responsive, wants to do everything I want it to do. I mean, a little bit of wind, not a GPS drone, this thing's $70. Look at all those lights. Okay, all right, I'm gonna send her out. Let's see how she does, all right? <laughs> I'm looking at my phone, almost crashed it into a tree. Oh my, what a dork. All right, my phone's down to 20% battery. All right, let me send it out there where there's no trees. All 
And that's about 200 yards. I'm gonna send it straight up. My goodness. Really? <laughs> what? All right, so I kind of want to do an over the water thing, but I want to make sure that, so it doesn't tell you how charged up the battery is or anything. So I'm gonna land it. Oh my gosh, this thing flies. I mean, look, look at the responsiveness of the controls. I mean, they're just really spot on. There's no waviness to it. Up, down, left, right. The only thing I don't have is I don't know how long, I mean, I don't have a battery life. So I kind of want to like just, I really want to do a punch across this pond. All right, I may lose the drone. I better bring it back. It's got to be getting close to the end of its battery life. It could go fishing. Look at this. Woo! My goodness. Okay, another thing too is this camera. It, it's got a manual gimbal. I know it doesn't have like a, um, let me bring it in here. Wow, this thing flies so good. All right, so can I hand land it? Yep, I sure can, my goodness. So here's some footage of the drone flying around, looking out of the camera. And it's got really good footage for an $80 drone. It's not a great camera drone. Um, you're gonna have to spend five or $600 to get a really good camera drone, but for $80, that's a great way to practice. When the controls are in your hands, it feels like a six or $700 drone. It really does. The fluid, the way it steers, the way it acts. Uh, this would be a great first drone once you learn the orientations of it with the mini drone. It handles the wind very well. There's no latency, as I said. I mean, look at this thing fly around. I mean, of course, now it's not windy. You can tell by the pond, but it performs so well. So we're going to go inside. We're going to go over the app, the features of the remote, the features of the drone, and get familiar with it. But again, thanks so much for watching. All right, let's start off with this wonderful case that this thing comes in. It's padded, it's really nice. I think I've paid more for a case than this drone costs for some of my other drones. Um, got this nice piece that goes in here. The drone fits in really, really nice. You don't even have to uh, pull, the, pull the props off to put it in, which is really nice. A lot of them you have to. So, and what's the controller fits in underneath and then the battery's going in on the sides. And it zips up really nice. It comes with a, uh, strap if you want to carry it around on your shoulder and again this is really impressive for this price point to have this really nice uh, case so the case also has a really nice pouch that you can keep what it comes extra with so it comes with four extra blades it comes with uh, the prop guards four of them it comes with two batteries and two charging cables it comes with a handy dandy screwdriver <laughs> um, and it comes and it, you can either fly it with or without the bra the bottom braces. Um, it, it, it'll fly really close to the ground, so you would have to use a launch pad if you wanted to. Because if you look at the A10, it kind of has these extensions off the motor, so it kind of sits off the ground a little bit where this would sit all the way down. So if you want to hand fly it, this would be great because these things do weigh about seven grams, which would only be about 5% of the um, total weight of the drone. And they snap in like this. Very simple. And to unsnap them, you got to push down on this and pull out. Um, so the battery pops in right here. It's really nice. This is your antenna. Uh, the camera is a gimbal, but it's, it is manually movable. So you can change it. And it also, this has a 120 uh, degree field of view from the camera. Lots of really nice lights, on off switch. I mean, these are really cool lights. You saw it when I was flying it. And um, we'll, when we're doing the setup, I'll show you what the different lights mean. 
It's a really good looking drone. Looks a lot better than what the price point is. So it comes with two batteries. And what I love about these batteries, it doesn't take a big clunker. All it takes is you gotta hook the charging cable into it and put it into a USB. It takes about an hour and a half to charge and you'll get about 12 minutes of flight time with each battery. So to attach the prop guards, they just snap in on the sides like that and take them back off. You just push down on this and pull out. So if you're flying it indoors, you definitely want to use the prop guards, but this is really more of an outdoor drone. And if you're flying outdoors, I don't really know if you need the prop guards. Plus they'll probably cut down just a little bit on your, on your flight time. So on the remote, it takes four AA batteries. You snap that in there and with your handy dandy screwdriver, you can screw the screw back in. So this feels like really nice. It comes with this piece that just snaps in to the top of the right here. And you push down on it to pull it out. And this is what your phone goes in, pulls up and down. So on your controller, you turn it on right here. Here's your takeoff button. But on the back side is where the trim and the speed and the headless mode is. So right here is your trim buttons. So in other words, if the drone seems to be floating to the left or to the right, uh, what you do is you, while you're flying it, you hold down on one of these buttons and it'll self-correct itself. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to these trim buttons, but you'll understand those once you get to flying it. This is your speed button. If it's windy outside, I suggest to go to speed three right away. So it's one, then you'll hear two beeps and then three beeps. And this is headless mode. Um, you, you'll hear two dot dots and that means it's going into headless mode. And what that does, that changes the orientation of the drone to no matter what you're doing with the controls, it'll fly in that direction. But I say don't use that. This is a beginner drone. You want to learn how to use the orientation of the drones anyway. So in other words, again, if it's sideways and you push forward on this, it's just going to go the, the direction you want it to. So when you turn the drone on, you have to go up and down. That way you can control the speed switch also when you know it's connected. Um, so your speed switch is in the back. So you'll see when you push it, 75, 100, 25. So let me show you something. So if you turn it off, you turn it back on. When you're pushing the speed switch and it's not doing anything, it's because it's not connected. You've got to go up and down, and then you know it's connected uh, when it's changing the speed. So with the drone turned on, one of the most important things you want to do is you want to go to your settings, and you want to go to your Wi-Fi, and you see Deer RC, touch that, and now you know it's connected. Then you can open up the app. So when you open up the app and you'll get it from your QR code and the instructions and you hit start, then you can see how the drone is connected by the camera. Works really well. I'm going to tell you something that's going to surprise you. Don't use the app to control the drone. Use the controller. The only thing you may want to use on here, because if you try to hit the speed switch, sometimes it doesn't change, use the speed switch on the app. Um, you can go back and look at your videos from it, but to start recording and video sometimes, just use the controller. Just use this app. So you can use the um, camera to see where you're going. So thanks so much for watching my review of the DERC D50. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe. Subscribers mean everything to me on this channel. And when you subscribe, please, please leave a comment. If you buy one of these, let me know if you like this controller as much as I do. And if you feel that yours is as fluid. And if you have any problems with it, I mean, leave a comment. I promise we'll review that also. So, uh, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.